Dr. Kimberly Wilson from Inspire Physical Therapy, and I'm so thankful that you are checking out this video, and hopefully you will find lots of good information to help you on your uh, rehab recovery. Last video, I focused on diaphragmatic breathing because it is the number one exercise that I prescribe in my practice, whether uh, I am working on rehabilitation toward uh, some sort of a rehab goal, whether that be through pelvic health or an orthopedic condition. We always work on diaphragmatic breathing because number one, it is so fantastically beneficial. I can't even put it all into words, like how much it's gonna help you. And then number two, a large portion of our population just don't do it, right? So we have, we lead such stressful and busy lives that we just sort of develop these shallow breathing patterns, but very, very important. So if you haven't checked that video out, please go back and have a look at it. I think you will find some very helpful information and I really think it's that important. So I wanted to do this video today on a topic of your core. Um, I, what I see a lot of times, you know, I, I'll get these, I'll get these strong uh, moms, ladies, they'll come in here and they might, well, first of all, they come because there is some sort of dysfunction and pretty common dysfunction is urinary incontinence, specifically in the population of my like really, really active moms, those moms that have returned to the gym and they're doing these super high level uh, exercises like CrossFit or bar and all of those are fantastic. And these women are amazing. They are doing some amazing things, like really, really challenging physical activities. And I'm so proud of them. But what they find is they have this limitation, right? They'll have some incontinence. And so <laughs> I wanna talk a little bit about the core because you know, they think they're really, really strong and truly they have some really strong core muscles. But if we don't sort of get the mechanics of it just right, then we're going to run into some issues with things like stress urinary incontinence, right? So I wanted to talk about that today. So when we, when I am training somebody to, or sort of retraining somebody to engage their core appropriately, the first thing I want to talk about is the transverse abdominus muscle. If you don't know what the transverse abdominus muscle is, it is your deepest core muscle. So think the very deepest layer. It is attached to your spine, your ribs, your diaphragm, into the pelvis and the pelvic floor muscles themselves. I sometimes refer to it as a corset muscle that's just a really good visual for me and my brain. And I feel like it resonates with a lot of people. So if you think about a corset and they would lace up the corset and then like pull it tight to sort of like pull everything in, that's very similar to what the transverse abdominus muscle does. So let's spend some time talking about the transverse abdominus and just for convenience sake, I'm going to refer to it as the TA muscle. Okay. So I'm going to use a little bit of a visual. I have a balloon that I blew up because I wanted to represent my transverse abdominus. And this is really helpful. And I think you'll see why, but if you think about this is the top, this is the bottom. And we want to imagine this just like a corset, right? So it, it goes from, for all intensive purposes for a this demonstration. We're just going to think about the TA from the diaphragm to the pelvic floor itself. So diaphragm here, pelvic floor here, and diaphragm does sit sort of like an umbrella uh, at, under your ribs, very edge of your ribs here. So diaphragm and then pelvic floor. And they do sort of have this this relationship, right? So it's, it is diaphragm, it is pelvic floor, and then the space around or the thing that connects the two 
again, for this demonstration, is the transverse abdominis. So they sort of form this canister, so to speak, um, where there's a certain amount of pressure held within the canister, just like this balloon. And if the TA, and again, my balloon is the TA, if the TA gets engaged, it disperses the pressure, right? So the pressure has to go somewhere. And depending on the mechanics of it, depending on how you engage your TA or you don't, right, is going to determine where the pressure goes. Okay. So if, for instance, if I am going to deadlift some weight or I'm going to do some jump rope, whatever the case may be, if I don't have proper engagement in my TA, then I might get a ton of pressure down below, right? Hopefully you can see my balloon sort of bulging at the bottom. Um, you know, it's not the only place I could get pressure. Maybe I have some weakness here between the uh, muscle bellies of the rectus abdominis, quite commonly known as a diastasis recti. And if I don't have really good TA engagement performance, then I might get a lot of pressure out front. The pressure has to go somewhere. And unfortunately, it's gonna find the weakest link. It's gonna find the weakest spot to move around in if it's not managed really well. So if there's weakness here in the front in the diastasis, then you're going to get some doming or some bulging or loss of control right there. If there's weakness or inefficiency in the pelvic floor, and I'm not going to go into a lot of what the ins and outs of that, right? Because that's a video for another day. But if there's weakness here or inefficiency in the pelvic floor and we can't control the pressure of the TA, then we're going to get a lot of bulging down below. And that's where we might see things like stress urinary incontinence with coughing, sneezing, jumping, running. Um, so again, there's, there's lots of little details that go into to some of that, but hopefully this can really help transform your confidence in uh, engagement of the TA. So we sort of set the stage for what the TA is. And I want to, in this video, hopefully, sort of teach you how to engage the TA without over recruiting your um, obliques, so the external obliques, internal obliques, without over recruiting the rectus abdominis in order to accomplish some of these higher level physical activities. And you know, sometimes a higher level physical activity for somebody that's just recently had a baby is lifting a car seat, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be CrossFit. Although I, I see a lot of moms that are, you know, have returned to something like that, but sometimes you know, it could be getting out of bed. It could be stepping over into a tub or a shower. It can be just, you know, taking care of an, uh, of an older child that still needs lots of attention or going up and down stairs. And then it's also the endurance factor of all those things, right? A, a mom at say eight o'clock in the morning might be doing pretty well, but by the time three or four or five o'clock in the afternoon comes around, uh, her muscles are just done for. So what we wanna do is create some appropriate muscle recruitment we want to create some efficiency, right? And use the muscles for what they're designed to be used for. So let's talk about what TA is designed for. It is a stability muscle. Your core has to have stability. If you think about the abdominal space, there's, there's no, there's this certain amount of your abdominal space that's not encased in in any kind of bony structure. So it's a lot of soft tissue. So we have to create an environment where it is stabilized onto the pelvis. The spine is stabilized onto the pelvis itself. So that's what TA does. 
Remember, it connects diaphragm to pelvic floor. It's this space here. So when it is engaged, you can feel safe moving, moving in period, right? So moving, lifting, jumping, all those things. So the TA can stabilize the spine onto the pelvis. So, but if it is not being recruited appropriately, then you're gonna get some of the other muscles, some of the mover muscles, those that are designed for movement, not stability, like your external and internal obliques, the rectus abdominis, sometimes the pelvic floor itself, sometimes these back muscles, so the paraspinals that run up and down your back, they'll try to stabilize, but that's not really what those muscles are designed to do, but they'll do it, You'll, you'll be stabilized to a certain degree, um, but it's just not efficient. So that's where we end up with some of the dysfunction like pain or incontinence or any of those kinds of things. So let's talk about TA again. I did, I did TA specifically with intention right behind my diaphragmatic breathing video because the two do sort of go together. And when I'm training for TA uh, recruitment, I'm going to do it with the breath. So TA, two things I want you to take away from this video regarding the transverse abdominis is that it's a, it's one of those automatic muscles. So it's communicating or it should be communicating with the brain in a split second. Whenever you um, decide you're going to do a movement, whether that movement is walking across the floor, getting out of bed or going up and down stairs, your brain looks, it works on that faster than you can even think about it to decide, okay, how much engagement do we need here so that we're safe doing that job? So it should be working automatically in the background. Um, it doesn't always happen, right? So sometimes that automatic piece of it gets turned off or becomes less efficient. Yeah, I see it a lot in postpartum. It, I think that that's pretty easy to see why that might be. Um, but also, you know, any sort of physical trauma, emotional trauma can also sort of turn off those stability muscles. TA doesn't work all by itself, but for this video, that's the one we're focusing on. So we want to make sure that that system is as efficient as it can be. So we have to do a little bit of retraining for the brain and for the TA system. You're not going to be walking around, you know, for the rest of eternity thinking about engaging TA, but once you're retraining it, you have to be real intentional about engaging it. So that's kind of where we start. Second thing I want you to know about it is that it is an expiratory muscle, meaning it's connected to the breath on expiration. So when you exhale, then it is engaged. Okay. So then to sort of go off of that, there's two different kinds of exhales. One is, for example, when you are sleeping, you're inhaling, you're exhaling, you're not consciously thinking about that. The diaphragm um, is, as you take breath in, gets to push down. And that sort of automatic or recoil right? It's almost like stretching a rubber band, right? It's going to go back into place. That's sort of how the diaphragm works on just sort of this passive relax exhale. There's not a lot of core muscle involvement on that kind of an exhale. So when we're training the transverse abdominis, we're doing an active exhale, right? Where we're forcefully pushing the air out in order for that to happen. TA has to be engaged. It's the muscle that does that. So we just sort of capitalize on that or utilize that uh, so a movement or action to get the most engagement of the TA. Okay? So from that, we're going to talk about engaging the TA appropriately. So we want to engage TA from the bottom up versus top down. I mean, if you think about the balloon here, it kind of makes sense. If I engage my TA at the top first, oh, 
and then try to go down. I'm just going to get so much pressure on the bottom uh, of my pelvic floor that there's no way to have a good control of things like incontinence. So TA, you want to engage it from the bottom up so that as the pressure gets sort of dispersed, it's in this upward uh, motion so that you get really good control from the bottom to the top as you exhale. Okay, so the air just sort of leaves from this um, bottom up approach. Okay, so keep those things in mind as we practice our TA. And I'll usually start my clients out with a very simple transverse abdominis exercise. So that's what I'm going to show you today. It's certainly more complex than what you'll see on this video, but this is a fantastic way to start training the TA. So you want to um, use that exhale that we learned on the diaphragmatic breathing video. So again, if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it. And you want to take that exhale phase, that active to engage my TA. Remember, if you are actively or forcefully exhaling, TA's got to be engaged, it doesn't have a choice. And once you get to the end of that exhale, you are engaged and you can then move safely. So that's how you start to retrain the TA. And what happens from those kind of activities is that your brain starts to get it. It starts to build those motor pathways and it, it's like a light bulb. Okay, this is what you want me to do. Got it. And so it'll start to kick on automatically. You'll notice that over time, you'll notice that, hey, I didn't have to think about it, but I feel totally engaged. So for instance, if I'm in this floor and I want to get up, and but I feel like my TA is not working or I'm doming in the middle or I just feel a lot of pressure down below or just feel weak and I don't feel like I don't have a ton of control, then I'm gonna do some breath work. So I'm gonna get that rhythm going and once I've got that mastered, I can start to engage my TA from the bottom up, right? So I'm going to inhale. Nice big inhale, expand my ribs, start my exhale, thinking about visualizing uh, that the air is leaving from the bottom up. So that TA starts to engage from bottom up. There we go. I'm going to exhale. And I, I just feel that corset, right? I just feel it cinching me up or, in, you know, it's, it's stabilizing and I feel totally in control right here. And once that's, once that's, once that's engaged, I'm safe to move in, into a different position and I can relax. If I want to sit back down, I sit back down. I'm completely in control, then I can relax. And that's how you start to train that TA to kick on before you start to plan a movement. <clears throat> and then from there, you can, you can start to strengthen that TA. We can start to load it with some resistance in different ways. We can start to increase the amount of time that we hold TA. We can practice holding it like I was doing a few seconds ago and still talking to you, still taking a few breaths against that contraction. That gets a little bit more complex than I can show you on this video. But honestly, that is a great place to start for sure, is engaging that TA before, <clears throat> before you do any kind of transitional movement, like certainly getting it in and out of the floor, but getting it in and out of your car, Rolling over in bed, that's a tough one, especially for my postpartum partum moms. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rolling over in bed, that can be horribly, horribly painful. So if I can get them to just start. <sighs> engage, then roll over in bed. <clears throat> They're going to feel so much stronger, so much more secure. They're going to have less leaking, all the things, 
if they can just start practicing that. And it's, and it's safe to start practicing that uh, right away. Really, it is. Now, we don't want to start loading it too soon, but getting the breath right and practicing just the before transitional movements, before picking up your baby, before loading that car seat into the car can really go a long way in retraining the system, protecting yourself, and um, eliminating things like urinary incontinence or um, a doming or any sort of hernia or prolapse or all those bad things that can happen. Back pain, pelvic pain, hip pain. Um, it's just really important kind of for getting all the muscles back on board after any kind of a trauma, a surgery, a, a car accident, certainly pregnancy and postpartum, all those things can really just sort of shut down that automatic um, muscle recruitment system. So we have to get it back on board. We have to retrain it, wake it up. There's a lot of muscle memory in there. So it, you know, it's pretty easy to retrain, but we just have to get the system going again and kick started a little bit. So hopefully that helps. Um, just one word of caution uh, with things that I see when I start to train the TA, especially for my really active clients that like to do um, higher level activities, is that what they're one of the things that they've sort of adapted in order to stabilize the core <clears throat> is they have really brought all of the players on board. So if, for instance, they're getting ready to deadlift or do some of the higher level activities in order to feel like their core is engaged, it's like all of the muscles are on board. So it's sort of this, right? It's sort of this uh, crunching. That's the word I'm looking for. It's this crunching to bring all of the muscles on board, your obliques, your rectus abdominis, right? You get this rounded ribs down, everybody's on board. And that's just not what you want to do. That is creating too much pressure on the balloon, number one. And then now I've got obliques and rectus and paraspinals and everybody else trying to stabilize. And guess what? TA hasn't even, it hasn't even arrived yet. It hasn't shown up because these guys showed up first. So TA is just sort of hanging out in the background. It's not really doing much of anything because it really, really, really is important to train it to show up and show up first. Get it to show up first. It can handle any added pressure that comes from the obliques or rectus or the paraspinals. But if it doesn't show up first, it's just going to get squeezed. It's going to check out. It's not going to do its job. So really focus on just letting that exhale happen. It's just that act, active exhale that that's TA that makes that happen. Monitor your midsection because if you are exhaling and pushing your stomach out the whole time, that's not TA. So just monitor, you want it to draw in like the corset, right? Like we talked about at the very beginning. I am going to just show you real quick what that might look like. I've got my Panama City um, sweatshirt on today because number one, it's cold here in Kentucky. And number two, I would really love to be on the beach today, but that's okay. We're here at work. So if you, if you watch my midsection, hands on ribs, I'm going to do a nice big inhale. And then I'm going to exhale from the bottom up. That's TA. And I can maintain that stability while I'm talking to you. Still engaged, still engaged, still engaged. And I'm nice and secure in the middle. Now, if I bring on external obliques, rectus abdominis, you know, that might look something like this. I'm bringing in all of the players and really, I can do that because I brought my TA on board first, but I just created so much more pressure in my midsection. Uh, and sometimes that's appropriate, but in terms of core stability, that's not what I need. I just need a 
I just need TA. And now I can engage TA. I can still talk to you. I can still do lots of things and I'll engage my TA. Relax it when I need to. Engage it when it's appropriate. But if I've got external obliques and I've got rectus and everybody's crunched, you really have room to get enough air to talk, right? So take all the other players out of the out of the equation. Just work on engaging your TA. Bottom to top. It's gonna to take so much pressure off of your pelvic floor. It's gonna make you feel so much more secure when you do transitional movements, going over in bed, going upstairs, picking up babies, and you're gonna feel so much stronger and so much more confident in your rehab recovery. And you can certainly build on that. So, but you gotta start with the basics. So if you're having trouble with feeling like you're just not getting your strength back in your tummy, you're feeling like you um, are having some, some leakage, some stress in your incontinence when you shouldn't, you um, just can't get, you just can't get everything moving like you, like you want it to, then maybe check, recheck, see if that TA is showing up and showing up first and it's being recruited from uh, bottom to top. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, comment, um, ask questions, um, shoot me a DM. Be happy to, to talk to you at any time and hopefully this video, you find this video helpful and thanks again for watching. Hope you have a great day.